I've been using an insane build in Horizon Forbidden West that is able to kill machines in seconds without them able to do anything back and best of all it's really cheap to use because as you might have noticed making certain ammo for higher rank weapons can be quite expensive and it might cost more than the loot you actually get from the machines. And sure you will need certain parts from machines to for example upgrade items but it's still nice to spend almost no shards getting them. And I also got a great metal shards farm you can do with this build. You maybe already noticed that I'm using warrior bows for this. It only costs one metal shard and some rich wood to craft the regular arrows and add an elemental type resource onto that for the elemental warrior bow arrows. So yeah, it's very cheap and with the special spread shot weapon technique you can unlock in the warrior skill 3, you can fire 5 arrows at the same time of that elemental type to build up this status effect extremely fast. Especially against machines that are weak against it. Although still, freezing machines that are not in particular weak against the element is still a solid tactic. And then the moment they are frozen, I grab my car just Bane and start shooting with the regular arrows. And this by the way with the critical boost Valor Surge, which I will touch more on in a moment. But yeah, spread shot with the regular arrows is still great. Although you could also go for the burst fire weapon technique where you can more easily focus three arrows on a weak spot for example. And it is kind of nice that you can have different weapon techniques on different bows of the same type so you don't have to switch them in the weapon wheel all the time but overall you just want to spam these regular arrows in rapid succession while you stay in the concentration so then the machine cannot really do anything back and they drop before you know it. Now you don't always have to use an element first. Also machines that don't have a lot of armor can easily go down by just using these regular arrows. And also on the very hard difficulty this build is very effective taking out the Apex Fireclaw, which is one of the highest level machines in the game, pretty easily. And again, without spending unnecessary shards on a special advanced ammo. Overall, this is kind of an old school Zero Dawn tactic. But because there are way more customization options in Forbidden West, there are actually way more ways to enhance this playstyle. So we'll tell you that. And of course, how to easily farm metal shards with this. Of course, if you like the video so far, then leaving a like on it would really help me out. And subscribe if you are new, because I got way more Forbidden West content coming your way and already up on the channel. So one way to enhance your your damage and overall playstyle is of course mods and maybe you already noticed that in Forbidden West they drop very rarely from machines and when they do it's mostly armor weaves at least in my experience. Now in this game you want to get these special weapon mods at the different weapon vendors in major settlements and they all have a different inventory with different weapon mods. For example the frost weapon mod so you build up that element faster can be bought at the hidden ember vendor after finishing that sea of the sense main mission. So I put that on my Renegade Warrior Bow, which you can by the way buy at Thorn Marsh. And it's the only like high level Warrior Bow with Frost Ammo. And once you are there, you can also see that this Hunter Fender sells a completely different list of weapon mods. So it's really worth checking every major weapon fender if you're looking for a specific mod. I also use the Firestorm Warrior Bow for other common elements. And this one is a reward from the Gate of the Vanquished side mission. You will also need to complete this for a trophy, by the way. And it is the third mission in a chain that starts over here on the map at Arrowhand. And fun fact by the way, I was quite surprised by this, but the weapon fender at Arrowhand sells unique weapon mods like the Critical Chance, which I use on my Karcha's Bane Legendary Warrior Bow, so these special crits appear more often, which deal double damage. So if you then also use the Critical Boost Valor Surge, you deal an insane amount of damage with just the regular arrows from this bow, especially when a machine is frozen. We'll touch on more ways to enhance it and the armor set I'm using but yeah with this tactic you can very easily farm metal shards because maybe you already noticed that even with a cheap ammo build like this you will at one point run into money problems especially after buying these mods and focusing on the workbench upgrades like I mostly had the parts for the machines but then I would only need shards to actually upgrade the piece I wanted but then I saw that it's actually nice to sell large machine cores because they give you 50 each and Slither Fangs, which I can now kill in like 20 seconds, drop a 6 of these, which is 300 metal shards. Now they of course drop metal shards too, and some other items. I'm only focused on selling the large machine cores though, because the other items might come in handy. But 
it basically costs you nothing to kill this machine. You can do it really fast and you get a ton of money in return. Now I am using the easy loot feature for this farm, which you can turn on at the difficulty settings when you switch it to custom. Otherwise the machine will only drop a one large machine core. But yeah, when you're farming, this will make it go faster. And we're still on the normal difficulty. Like, I don't like switching the difficulty down. Because obviously, if you do that, then this fight will go even faster. Now, the Tanaja can also be nice because the tail is worth quite a lot. But it will, of course, take you way longer to kill them. Especially if you, like me, don't turn down the difficulty. So then the Slither Fang is totally the better option, I would say. After killing it, return to a nearby campfire. Or use a festival pack to get away. And then simply go back immediately rinse and repeat and in the end this will give you a ton of metal shards if you use this build as well of course if you got a faster metal shard farm i'm all here drop it down in the comments down below now another crucial part of this warrior bow playstyle is the nora thunder warrior armor which you can of course get at the arena shop for 45 medals which is pretty easy to get and if you're having trouble in the arena i by the way made a video with arena tips on how to quickly get all the items you want and I will leave a link to that one at the end of this video. And as you already saw, this build is great in the arena too. And again, the Nora Thunder Warrior is a crucial part here. Because this makes sure that you can stay in that slow motion mode for a really long time. And this concentration bar also refills really fast. So you can quickly resume this almost untouchable tactic after the bar was empty. And after getting the armor to rank 3, you also unlock two weaves. One increases your weapon stamina bar. So you can use these techniques a lot. And the Valor Search Master plus two, so you can use your Valor Search more often. Like, as I mentioned before, this armor is the best armor in the game. It's great for every ranged playstyle, but it especially enhances this quick fire warrior bow build. Now, I do wish that legendary armors would have more weave slots, because right now, there's no reason for me to switch out the mods that the armor already has. And level four is, by the way, the max for these skills. So this armor already has deep concentration plus two. So then with the skills, you can unlock in the hunter skill tree you're already at level four which is minus 60 percent depletion speed for the slow motion which is insane but if you then put the deep concentration plus two mod on it which you can get by upgrading the purple to knock skirmisher armor they actually get a warning saying hey this doesn't count so better switch out the mods because yeah, there's no effect going on right now. So really the weave options are mostly for skills that are not on the armor instead of further enhancing what's already there. I also have impact damage increases on the Karja's Bane, the legendary warrior bow of course. If you for some reason don't know how to get this, just follow the races. The first one will lead you to the others as well and the first one is over here on the map. I also have the concentration damage plus 10% as a blue mod on this warrior bow. But there must be a purple variant too, right? I haven't found it yet. Of course, if you got it, let me know. Maybe it's a reward from an activity or it's like for sale at a weapon shop I haven't been to. Of course, totally let me know in the comments down below. And you can of course put five mods on these legendary weapons after fully upgrading them. And this really enhances their power. Of course, I will run down more cool playstyles in Forbidden West. So totally subscribe for videos about that. A like on the video would really help me out. And you can watch my previous video on how to get the best weapons and armor in the game by clicking on the screen. For now though, I will speak to you in the next one. Goodbye.